Let us rise as we sing this song one time before we pray. How great then. Let's sing my soul. Let's sing it together. How good the Hallelujah. I hear the rolling thunders. Thy path through the world. The universe is displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to me. How great the Jesus, how great the Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior, God, to me. How great thou art. How great thou Our Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise for your greatness, your awesomeness. You are the controller, the chief director of the universe. Lord, everything is in your hand. That Lord, and we trust you because we know your purpose and your plan for us, they are always good. Help us, oh God, to live in accordance to your direction for us. Lord, we speak to us tonight as we go again into your word, as we learn more of you tonight. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And every believer says, Amen. You may be seated. How many are glad to be here tonight? Amen. Come on, clap those hands unto the Lord. We are so glad to see everyone here tonight. You see, last week we started a discussion or the teaching on prayer and uh, breakthroughs in prayer. Breakthrough in prayer, how God provides answers or what are the keys to experience in your prayers being answered. And there are certain keys that we gave last week. We're going to quickly run through those keys and then we're going to go continue from where we stopped last week. So the key number one we dealt with last week is that you have to base your prayer on the word of God. Because we come to understand there are people that pray and their prayers is based on the problem. So you never want to pray the problem. Every time you pray the problem, you're going to be experiencing depression. Every time your focus is on the problem, you're going to be, you, you, you're going to be worn out, sad, and depressed. So learn to just pray the and pray based on the word of God. Number two, we learned it last week is believe that you receive when you pray. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. I receive when I pray. The number three is don't give in to fear. You know, the fear is the same tool the enemy uses, you know, against God's people. So it's, it's the old trick, fear. You want to be afraid that you're not going to receive what you're asking God for, that God doesn't care about you that much. What is the point of praying? What is the point of even praying to be afraid? Is the fear is the opposite of faith. So don't give in to fear. Don't learn to doubt. Begin to believe and trust God. Number four, see yourself with the answer. Say, I got the answer. Come on, say it one more time. Say it like you believe it. 
all right, it may sound like you don't have common sense, but that is how these things work in the realm of the spirit. You got to see yourself with the answer. You got to visualize yourself that you already have the answer, not going to have it, but you already have it. Number five, testify that you your prayer is answered. Develop your confession. And I love this because many of us in STBC have come along. We're learning to just testify even when others think that you are not making sense of what you are saying, but you refuse to speak the problem. You just testify. You give testimony of what the Lord has done or what the Lord has promised to do. And number six, number six, so we're going to move on to today's number six is thanksgiving. 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 Somebody say thanksgiving. The thanksgiving uh, equals to thanks living. So you are live your life is uh, is full of thanksgiving. You are not. Uh, put on this, you are not. You are not looking at your situation, please. Oh, this is, but you are looking more at what the Lord has done. Somebody say thanksgiving. So we're going to go to some scriptures uh, on thanksgiving. Uh, keys to getting your prayers answered. It tells us that we should be extremely grateful to God and express thanksgiving and praise profusely. I mean, you have to be thankful for what the Lord has done for you. You have to thank him. So if you believe he has answered you, if you see yourself for the answer, you are testifying that you got the answer, then it is what not, it is important then that you have to give him thanks. Amen? So we read Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Be careful for nothing. You know what that means? You know what that means? Don't worry. Tell anybody, don't worry. <laughs> Tell the next one, don't worry. Some of you have degree in, in, in worrying. Master degree. Give it up. Worry, I've never solved the problem. Worrying is down payment for trouble. Worrying is playing God that God is not able to do what he promises to do. You know, so when you are worrying, it shows that you are saying that God is not able or willing to do what he says he will do in his word. So he tells us here, be careful for nothing, but in everything, in everything, wait by prayer and supplication and uh, with thanksgiving. What is it? With thanksgiving. So thanksgiving is the missing ingredient in most of our lives. You know how you bake a cake and uh, there's an imp important ingredient in the baking that makes the cake comes out right. What is the most important ingredient when you bake a cake? Eggs, flour, butter, oil, yeast. You, are, you, you all have your own different answers. <laughs> yeah. He's a chef, so he thinks egg is the key. All right. All right. But there is an ingredient that if you don't have in the cake, in the whole process, it's not going to come out right. You know, it's not going to come out right. So most of us in our prayer life, we, we miss out the most important ingredient. That is thanksgiving. That's why when Jesus prayed, how did it begin? Lord, I thank you because I know you heard me. Jesus taught his prayer with thanking God, thanking the Father that he already heard him even before he asked. So here we see it's telling us that when you pray, let your prayer and your request be made known to God, but it has to be with thanksgiving. Because if you believe you received it, you don't want to wait until you see it before you thank him. You're going to thank him even before you see it. Somebody say amen. amen. Now Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Colossians 4 verse 2, that's another scripture that with thanksgiving is a continuing prayer and watch in the same with what? With what? With thanksgiving. So you have to include that in your prayer if you're going to receive answer that you desire. You know, there's something about thanksgiving that, that does something to the person you are thanking. 
Let's say, let's say for instance, uh, let's say a guy, maybe a very nice gentleman, promises you a suit. Are you going to thank him right away for the promise or are you going to wait until you get the suit to thank him? Before, is that right? You know, so the same thing with God. So, and God, God is more trustworthy than a man. If I come and say, I'm going to give you a thousand bucks next week. Oh, thank you, thank you. Is that right? Now, God said, I'm going to give you this. He said, until I see it before I... I thank you. And that's where most of us are missing it. And many times, when you say, oh, thank you so much, nobody has ever given me nothing. Meanwhile, you've not gotten it yet. Now, as you thank this person so much, even if the person was kidding, the thanksgiving is so high, you're going to go to the store and buy you a suit. Because now you have released thanksgiving profusely even before you see the manifestation. So when you are dealing with the God of heaven, if you thank God in advance, oh man, we, we, we used to pray that when I was m much younger, we, we used to use certain terms like this. Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Those are kind of prayers we prayed growing up as teenagers. We learn to thank God in advance, like you are, like you are giving an, an advance thanksgiving because you know it's going to do it. So you are not even bothered or stressed out by what you see. You just thank him anyway. Amen. I mean, all of you would love to receive something from God. Then give him thanks. Give him thanks. It's a, thanksgiving can be a sacrifice. There's a song we used to sing. We bring the sacrifice of into the... Come on, sing it that you can sing. The sacrifice into the house. Of the Lord. So it becomes a sacrifice that you give it anyway when you don't feel like it. Get it? Like you don't feel like saying, Lord, I thank you, but you thank him anyway because you know that is the best way, the right way to do. So when you give God thanks, even when you've not yet seen it, it, it is a key to see that you receive what you have asked for. First chapter 5 of First Thessalonians verse 16 and uh, 8 to 18, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. That is in verse 18 says, in everything. In everything, do what? Somebody asked me many years ago, what is the will of God for me? So it's Thanksgiving. Is that right? What is God's will for you? What is God's will for you? Thanksgiving. Let's read together. One, two, three, read. So that is God's will concerning your life is thanksgiving. So don't be looking for a will. This is right there written black and white. God's will for you is to live a life, have a thanks living life, a life of thanksgiving. That is God's will concerning you. So God wants us to always give him thanks and if you begin to give God thanks, you are bound to see the answer quicker than the one who is complaining or waiting to see the answer before he gives God thanks. So God wants us to, to thank him for what he has promised to do because we believe that whatever he says he will do, he will do it. You know, and, you, and it's possible that you may not see the answer right away, but you have to just learn to trust the Lord. Amen. You have to learn to trust God. You know, if you've lived long enough, you know that God never fails. Just trust him. The reason why many of us don't receive because we don't trust God. We, we think God is just a man that changes his mind back and forth. No, if God says, if you can trust him, you can see manifestation. Say, I stay with me, I trust God. Say, I trust God. You know, so you have to trust him. So thanking him becomes easy because you actually believe in your heart that what he said to you will come to pass. You got to trust God. Now that was number six. Now number seven, which is another important part to keep your prayer answered, is keep your mind positive. You know, keep your mind what? Let me control your thought. To line up 
with what you believe. I know I spend time on this because this is an area that many Christians overlook and they go through life not really experiencing God's best because they pray for one thing and what they are thinking is different from what they prayed for. See? And nobody can read your mind, but of course your action would tell somebody what you are thinking. Is that right? Your action is a proof of your thought life. Because if you believe God has answered, you're going to act a little different because you're going to be more confident, you're going to be more relaxed, you're going to be more outspoken, you're going to be more happier because you know he has answered you. So, But if you don't believe God has done it for you, no matter you come to church, you're still looking sad and depressed and complaining and angry at everyone and anyone, you know, because you really are not having your mind in the right place. So, so that's one of the greatest challenges in getting our prayers answered is our thought life, our thought life. That's why he tells us in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Joshua 1 verse 8, let's turn there, Joshua chapter 1 uh, verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Is that right? And he said, but you shall think, you shall meditate on it. How many times? Day and, and I often say if it's not day, then it's what? And if it's not night, then it is. That means all the time. All the time you have to think on the promises of God, on the word of God. And he said that you may be able to observe, to do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then and only then, thou shalt make your way prosperous and you would have good success. So your thought life has to line up with the word of God. That's the word of God. And that's why meditation is very big. And in almost, almost, in almost, are you, are you listening to me? Are you there? I can, are you with me? Okay. In almost every religion of the world, they teach them meditation. Because it, in any religion, it's big. Because meditation connect you to the realm of the spirit. And when you can meditate on the word of God and you focus your thought on the word of God and you keep your mind there and no matter what is coming against you to, sub, to, to distract, you say, no, I'm going to stay focused on God's word. Because if you can keep your mind in the, with the word of God, you can see the answer coming to reality in your life. Now you have prayed, you, you have believed God, and you, you have, then you have all these thoughts bombarding your mind that you may not get to see manifestation of what God has promised you. Many of us know what I'm talking about. You prayed for God to, for example, easy one, you prayed for God to send you a spouse. So Lord, I want to get married, you know, I need a wife. And, and God says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. So Lord, why can't I find her? God says, you... you and, God give you a promise, and then in your mind you say, but I'm not good enough. I don't have the nice job. No woman would ever want to be with me. I, I don't have what it takes. You know, I'm just too old. I mean, I just, all those thoughts come to your mind. Maybe you're, maybe you're a woman, and you say, Lord, you know, I've many of them sent me messages, not those of you here. Those of you here are good. Amen? But overseas, overseas. Say, I, want, I want to get married and I can't be alone. I'm, I'm stressed out. I'm depressed. You know, and I just can't be by myself. And I'm thinking, you have all it takes. If you can change your thought life and begin to think, you know what, I got what it takes. I mean, the right man is coming my way. Every day you step up, you get up out of your bed, you come up expecting to meet him. Some of you are doing mm -hmm. I, would, I used to tell some of the daughters many years ago, even when you go to Walmart, go like you're going to meet that Mr. Boaz. <laughs> Amen? So when you go to Walmart, don't be going there, just going there without thinking. At least look a little better because most of those men don't mind their spirit. They are very true. 
what they see is what they are moved by. So if they see you, 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 your head is looking unkept, your face is all looking cracked up, you just... <laughs> wearing some, uh, you call these PJs, right? You wear some PJs to Walmart. And start praying in tongue, Rama la kappa. What kind of woman is this? No matter how, the, even if the men want to talk to you, say, this one, I pass. Because you are not ready. If you believe, you receive, you'll be ready. Say, I believe, I got it, it's in my mind, it's in my mind. I believe what God says is true, concerning my life. It will not leave me by myself in the name of Jesus. So now if you believe that everything you do will line up with what you believe. You got to believe that you are loved. You got to believe that you are lovable. You got to believe anywhere you go, you always have a good answer. Say, I'm loved. I'm lovable. I am blessed. Everywhere I go, everybody loves me. I know you like that. Everyone loves Raymond. Is that to be a show? Is that show still on? Everyone loves. Not anymore. Huh? A reruns. Yeah, you are too young. So most of you are very young. Everyone loves Raymond. See, everybody loves me. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, but what I'm saying basically here is when you think on the word of God and you meditate on the word of God, it's going to translate into your living. Are you with me? It's going to show up in the way you carry yourself. Because God's word will make an expression in your life. You have to submit yourself, your mind, to allow the word of God to make an expression in your life. And that is important, you know, and that you, and that comes about when you control your thought life, when you think in line with the word of God. I'm not going to be here telling you, oh, that's just easy to do the first time. I know how difficult it can be in the beginning. But after a while, it becomes your norm. It becomes easier. That's why we often say practice makes perfect. You got to practice it. You got to practice it. There was a time I used to shout, no! Somebody shout, no. No! They have no idea what is coming to your mind. You cannot overrule thought with thought. You overrule thought with words. So if the thoughts are coming to your mind that you don't like, you can say no. Let those around you wonder, what's wrong with them? No, I know what I'm doing, going through. This thought is too much, and as in, I can't take it no more. No! I begin to quote the word of God's scriptures to yourself. Because if you're not careful, those evil thoughts will bombard your mind so much that they will subdue you to begin to think in line with the problem. So but when, when, you, when you refuse to take those thoughts that come to your mind and put your mind and subject yourself to the thoughts of the word of God, which can only come to you through meditation, through thinking on the word of God. When you think on the word of God, you are bound to see the result because God's word would do in you, with you, what it says. You can become an expression of the word of God. So you learn to control your thought life. Remember this, that you gravitate towards your most predominant thought. So I said, but you told us that last year. Yeah, I did. But look at, I told you last year, and you're still thinking the way you are thinking. That means you still have to hear it again because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to keep hearing the word of God until you become a master of life. So that means you have to control your thought life to be in agreement with what you believe. You have to think and see yourself with the promise of God. You have to think constantly on the goodness of God. Say God is good all the time. That is his nature. 
Yeah, God is. So you have to think all the time on the goodness of God. You know, practice that. Don't allow the wrong thought that God is mean or God is wicked to be in your mind. God is not wicked. God is always good. He's a good God and is good all the time. No matter what you experience in your life, God is always good. So if you can focus your mind constantly, think constantly on the goodness of God, it will help you to see the answers to your prayers. But if you are thinking constantly, Constantly on the evil around you, on what you are going through, on how nobody cares for you, on how life is hard, you're going to experience more of that in your life. This is simple, but yet it's profound to live the kind of life that God has destined for us to live. So he's good all the time. When you feel depressed, you know, it's because you are emphasizing on the lack in your life. People get depressed because your thought process is focused more on what they don't yet have. But when you focus on what you already have, which is what it says, God says, everything is available, everything is ready, everything belongs to you. If you focus on that, depression goes up the window. But if you are thinking about the lack, what you don't have, what you should have had, what you should have, where you should have been by now. If that becomes your focus in your mind, you are going to be experiencing a kind of life of depression that is not meant for you. Now let's look at, at chapter 57 of Isaiah verse 19. I'm going to read from the contemporary English version. Maybe we should read this together. One, two, three, read. Start singing my praises, no matter where you are. I, the Lord, will heal you and give you peace. Now, this is in the old covenant. And I tell you that it's in the new, it's already in operation. So start singing his praise. Start celebrating God. And the more you sing his praise, the more your mind is focused on him more than what you are going through. So no matter where you are, no matter where you are in life, no matter the circumstances you are, that clouds your life, just keep on singing because the Lord said is he has already brought healing to you and he has given you peace. Somebody say amen. Philippians 4 verse 8, finally my friends, my brothers and sisters, keep your mind on whatever is true. This is, I'm also big on this, you know, I'm big on this. Keep your mind on whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is holy, whatever is friendly, whatever is proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. Do you see that? So it's telling us that, you know, what you should think about should be lined up with it. This is a prescription for a life of peace. Think on what is, put your mind on what is true. Put your mind on what is pure and right and holy and friendly and proper. Don't ever stop thinking on, about what is truly worthwhile. So don't focus your mind on what is not worth it. You know, and what now, so that I'm sharing with you many, many times as well, that nobody can force you to think on what you don't want to think about. Do you believe that? If you do say, I believe it. I mean, nobody can force you to think on what you don't want to think about. Nobody can force you to think on what you don't want to think about. That means if bad thoughts come to your mind, you can say, no, I'm not going there. You want to think in line with the word of God. This is important. You want to see your prayer answered, you have to focus your thought life on the word of God. It sounds easy, but it takes work. Amen? It takes effort. And many of us want to put the work in. That's why our life is always up and down. We think good today. We think bad the next day. Good in, Just too much. Too much. Roller coaster. Even your countenance shows it. One day you're happy, the next day you are sad. Why? Because what is coming to your mind and what you are taking in, you don't have to take every thought that come to your mind if it's not in line with the word of God. It's okay for a bird to fly over your head, but it becomes abnormal if you allow the bird to make a nest of your hair. Is that not right? Of course, Brother John have no hair, so it's okay. You don't have to deal with that. But those of you have hair, you know, it's okay. Let, let the thoughts fly, but don't take it. They shouldn't stop there. They shouldn't park in your head because the warfare to your advancement is 
is between your two ears. You know, your advancement that God, has, the increase God has promised you to see, manif to see it manifested between your two ears. So if you can win there, you win in life. There is no great man in this life, whether it's spirituality or natural, whatever it is, that have, that have not have a master of their mind because your mind is the control center of your life. It says, as a man think in his mind, so that man is. So as you think in line with the word of God, your life becomes subjected to your thought life. Say, so I'm making it. I'm going higher. Making progress in every direction. In the name of Jesus. All right, Hebrews 13, verse 15. Are, are you learning something so far? Hebrews 13, verse 15. Our sacrifice is to keep offering praise to God in the name of Jesus. The Amplified Classic puts it this way. <clears throat> Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all the times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledge and confesses and glorify his name. So what he's saying here is that let every thought affirm that you have the answer to your prayer. Let every thought affirm that you have the answer to your prayer. Let every thought of your mind indicate you have the answer to your prayer. Let every thought, I'll say it again, affirm, let every thought indicate, let every thought line up that you actually have the answer to your prayer. So if you are thinking contrary to the answer to your prayer, you are giving in to situations that would not be beneficial to your life. Satan battles against the mind. The mind is the arena where the battle is fought. So you must learn to win in your mind. You must learn to win in your mind. Win in your mind and subject your mind to the word of God, to the will of God. Don't take in every thought that the enemy throws your way. Don't allow negative thoughts to enter your mind. Let your mind affirm that you have the petitions that you request from God. You know, that's why you have to keep your mind positive at all times. And you keep your mind in such a way that the evil thought that tries to come in, there's no way to come into your life. Somebody shout a loud amen. How many of you believe you have answers to your prayers? How many believe you have answers to your prayers? Now, you see, you see to get answers to your prayer, you know, God uses people. People. Somebody say people. So that means that you must understand and be able to discern the people that come into your life and go out of your life. See, when God wants to bless you, he brings people into your life. When God wants to give you a new answer to that, your prayer, he's not going to trade from heaven. You think God is going to throw the answer. Here the answer comes. No, it's people. And it's possible is the person sitting beside you is the answer people. And when God also wants to protect you, he takes people out of your life. So when people walk out of your life, don't cry over it. Tell your neighbor beside you, don't cry over spilled milk. Milk another cow. Yeah, so don't cry over it. Because God never uses what has left you to bless you. God will always use what you have to bless you. So when God wants to bless you, bring somebody into your life, so you have that, and through whoever God has brought into your life, begin to experience some kind of blessing that would not have come. Yes, God's provision of answers to your prayer is directly or indirectly related to people. Are we still together? Yes, I mean people. People, that's right. There's somebody, someone, somewhere in your life, around your life, I have the idea or the key to your next level. The person may be in your life right now and, uh, and you may miss out because you are looking for something else. But the answer is right within you. The answer is right with you. You know, so you just need God for discernment because the answer, I don't know what you've prayed for. I don't know what you've asked God to do in your life, but already the answer is going to be through somebody. 
And that's why you have to learn to treat everyone you meet with respect, with courtesy, and with love. You never know if that is a man or woman God wants to use to bring the answer you've been praying for. So you have to be kind and nice to everyone. You just never know. You may not like the way they look, but it could be the answer to what you need. God is not going to come down from heaven and throw the answer to you. You will use somebody, somebody in your word. If the person is not already in your word, he will send somebody to you that will bring about the answer. You want a new job, it's through somebody. You want to, to prosper, maybe somebody will give you an idea that will take you to where you need to be. You want to buy a house, maybe it's through somebody. You want to make extra money in life, maybe it's through somebody. So always value people that comes around in your life. Never disrespect them. But you also have to avoid persons that are not in agreement and those that will attack your faith. Those who will attack your faith and your belief to receive from God, don't be in agreement. Don't, don't, don't connect with them. Learn to not be in agreement with those who will attack your faith. Now number eight. Is that number seven or number eight? Where are we? Number seven. Number seven. Now, number eight. Expect God to provide a plan that would deliver your desire. Expect God to provide the answer. Expect God. If you have prayed, expect God to provide a plan that would deliver your desire. Expect God. Expectation is a breeding ground for miracle. When you expect God to do something, he will do it. Because God will always confirm his word, you know, with signs following him, but we have to expect it. We have to expect him to do it. It's important that you have to note that the God of heaven provides answers to your prayers and your heart desire through a plan, a systematic, uh, a systematic scheduling of events. God will set up a plan to meet your request. Set up a plan to take you to the promised land. He will set up a plan. What do you say? A plan to fulfill your destiny. Set up a plan. I think of the man. There's a man in the Bible. Uh, his name is Joseph. I mean, of you know the story of Joseph. Because Joseph have this great idea. God have showed him that he's going to be a leader among his in his family, God showed him a dream that his father and mother and, and father and brethren would bow before him. So he knows. But you know what Joseph have to experience. So God's things are set up. So whatever you are faced with tonight is just a setup. Help me tell the person beside you, it's just a setup. Tell the next one, it's just a setup. That should be a mess. It's just a setup. It's just a setup. It's just a setup. So God will set things up, orchestrate events in your life to take you to somewhere bigger and greater. But it, it, you have more appreciation of what God has done if you just understand what is taking you through. You must have prayed and you don't see the answer yet and you see things are going the contrary direction. It has, it's setting things up. I gave an example the other day of, uh, of Paul, Apostle Paul. You know, God told him, now I'm sending you to Rome. And he ended up in, in, in the island of Malta, beaten by a snake, you know, and he beaten up. I experienced all kinds of situations in his life. But eventually, about two years later and three chapters later, he ended up in Rome and able to do the things that, that God called him to do. Now, that's, now that is is set up by God. How about Joseph? Joseph was sold. Joseph was thrown in the pit by his brothers. Then from the pit into slavery. Then from slavery into prison. Then from prison to where? Palace. But God had a plan. See, your plan to go higher is already in the works. I say your plan for elevation is already in the works. So don't allow your current situation to make you think that God hasn't answered you. Say, but I prayed and things are getting worse. I mean, of you have experienced that. Not just one of you. You prayed and things got worse. 
before it got better. <laughs> Once you know how this is work, it, you, 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 are, you, are, you are no more stressed and you just know God is doing something. You know, you may not like what you see now, but what you see now is one of the steps you have to go through to get to where God wants you to be. Amen? Because I'm blessing you with friends. He told you I'm giving you wonderful friends and the next day you lose three friends. But he's doing something. Think about the story of Joseph we just mentioned. He went, the brothers threw him in a pit, one, waiting for him to die there so that his dream would die from the pit. You know, grace was working, favor is on his, working on his side. And from the pit, he ended up, you know, into the house of Potiphar as a slave. From the slave, he was lied on for what he did not even do. He ended up in prison. Then in prison, he met, uh, he met a butler who he helped interpret the dream as a butler, please don't forget me, now remember me. Are there people in your life you thought are forgotten you that you helped so much? But God has a way of bringing your thought to your mind remembrance. You know, and the Bible tells us two years later, this butler who appeared to have forgotten Joseph remembered Joseph what had happened in the prison. And the Bible tells us that with that, Joseph was had an encounter with Pharaoh because of what had happened with him in the prison. And all of that ended up, Joseph ended up in the palace. He became second in command in the foreign land. So that means that whatever God has in stock for you, if you follow his agenda, it is a systematic step that has been scheduled by God. Remember, there's a scripture that we always read, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, verse 8 to verse 10, Amplified Classic. We often read that, and I believe that scripture so much as well. It talks about that God has already pre-planned, pre-arranged your life. Just have to align yourself with the plan of God and you begin to experience the, the goodness of God in your life. Go all the way to verse 10. And verse 10 says, For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, that we may do those good things that God has predestined, planned beforehand. Taking path which he had already prepared ahead of time. So, so that we should walk in them and uh, live in the good life which he had pre-arranged and made ready for us to live. Do you believe that? It's in your Bible. That means that God already planned everything out. You just have to align your thoughts. That's why we talk about alignment. I talk about consciousness a lot because that has worked in my life and it's in the scriptures. You got to align your thoughts and your consciousness with the word of God. Because God has planned, pre-planned things for you. Good life, he said. Pre-arranged. Think about it. Even when you got in the prison, it's still a good life. Some of you didn't hear that. Even when things don't look right, it's still what? Because even in the midst of situation, you are still advancing. Are you understanding this? In the midst of the, all the accusations, in the midst of the lies, the light on you at the place of work, you're still going forward. It's still working out for your good. That's why it says, for all things work together for the good of them that love God. Those who are the called according to his purpose. So everything is working for your good. The good life is your portion. The answers to your prayer is your portion. Say with me, I got the answer to my prayer. God is working it out. It may take some time, but I'm not giving up. It must come to pass. I'm not quitting. It must come to pass. My answer must manifest. It must manifest. It must manifest. I'm going higher. I'm advancing. I am increasing. The word of God for my life must come to pass. In the name of Jesus, whatever thing God has for me, I will line up my mind, my thoughts, my actions with the word of God and I will see the manifestation of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living in the name of Jesus somebody shout a loud amen, amen. 
When you talk like that and you act like that, the devil gets confused. But you refuse to quit. You know, sometimes you know there are so many bigger blessings God has in stock for you. And because God uses people, say with me, God uses people. Say it again. God will use people to answer my need. Now, because God uses people, there's a lot involved. <laughs> Sometimes the person God wants to use doesn't want to cooperate. Is that not right? There are times God, if God wants to use you, He refuses to cooperate. You, you are watching, not you sitting here, you're okay. You, you always cooperate. God told you, do this for this person. No, I'm not doing it. No. You are struggling with them. You are delaying the answer for that person. Until eventually you submit. Think about the woman. God told the prophet, I have commanded the widow to feed you. Are you on do you remember that scripture? Say, so I've commanded the widow to feed you. That is the prophet. Is that Elijah? Yeah, it gets there. And the woman doesn't want to feed him. The woman said, man of God, what I have is just enough for me and my son. So we can die. Forget about me giving you nothing. I'm giving you nothing. But yet God already told him, told her, told him that this woman is supposed to do that. Yet the woman is struggling to obey. So there are people that God has told to bring you that car you've been praying for. That are still holding back the car. That's why you come to church and begin to decree that anything holding back your destiny helpers be released tonight. Yeah. That whatever is holding up that man, that woman, that God has positioned to help you to the next level, we decree that thing be removed tonight. Yeah. It is in the hand of somebody. That is holding things back. But when God works on the person's heart and the person agrees, it begins to work like it's magic. It's no magic. It's no magic. It's no magic. It's just your season has come. And when your time comes, the person begins to do what it's supposed to do. They don't even know why they're doing it, but they do it anyway. I don't like him, but I got no choice. I'm paying his ticket. I don't like her, but I'm going to give her, I'm going to pay for the rent for her for one year. I don't like the way she looks, but I'm giving her the contract anyway. See that? Because God has touched the heart of that person that's supposed to be a destiny helper. So many of you are praying for something. God already sent the answer. You should be praying. And, and the more you thank God, the more you confess you got it, the more the person that's holding it releases it for you. It has already left the hand of God. Now it's up to you now to believe God by faith and somehow it will come to pass in your life. Somebody shout it loud. Amen. Amen. God will always make a way. Your prayers already answered. Say my prayers already answered. I'm waiting for manifestation. It must come. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. It must come in the name of Jesus. So one thing that helps us give you these, these steps that we give you, I believe we gave eight on eight, eight of them. What happens is that it helps you to stay focused on God's word. Now you're going to look at it, you're going to read it more, study more, so your mind is focused on God's word. So it's not just preaching to you, it's actually teaching you and giving you some guidelines to help you stay focused. Are we understanding this? It's I, I think of Abraham. I don't know if you know Daddy Abraham. God promised Abraham, I'm, I'm going to give you a lot of children and, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to just bless you and bless you and bless you and make you a blessing. But Abraham looked around himself and he doesn't see any children. But God told him, I will give you children that you will be, it can't even be counted as much as the stars. So anytime Abraham feels depressed, you know what he does? He goes outside. He looks at the stars. I can see them. My babies are going to be as many as this. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's counting seven, eight, nine, ten, one hundred, one thousand. Man, he's, he's tired of counting. 
he lost count. He lost count. You see, you go outside so you can encourage yourself in the process of waiting. What Abraham was doing was holding on to the word of God that your children will be as many as the stars. So you hold on to the promise of God and you follow through these steps. Your answer, you already got it. You have to believe it. You have to walk it. You have to think it. And it manifests in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, we shall close here today. We're going to talk next week how to receive divine plan of action. How you receive the plan of action that God has in stock for you. How do you receive the plan of action? How does it work and how does it manifest in your life? You know, what we teach here is just practical steps that will help you to experience your best life that God has destined for you. Somebody shout, Amen. All right, I'll give room for a question or two if you have any questions, one or two, that, that'll bring it, that'll make me to say something probably to explain something deeper. We can do that. You have two minutes. Any questions here before we pray? Two minutes. If you have questions before we pray tonight. All right. It looks like everyone got it. Everyone got it. I got it. I got it. In the name of Jesus. Let us rise. Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We magnify your name for your faithfulness and your awesomeness. Lord, your word is always true and always true. And we can always trust in you. We can bank on your word. We can rely on your word. We can have confidence in your word that no matter what we see or experience, your words are yes and amen. So we believe as we've learned tonight, help us to keep our eyes, our minds, everything focused on what we have received tonight that we will see the manifestation of your word for our lives. So Father, we thank you as we leave now. Lead us by your spirit. Take us home safely by your spirit and let every evil plan of the enemy come to naught in the name of Jesus. That nothing planned against us in a wicked way, it will never prosper. But we shall get to walk in the goodness, experience your goodness, and have a life of bliss. It's just experiencing you all the time with evil not being part of our lives. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And every believer says, Amen. All right, lift up your offering. We thank you as we give tonight. Everyone giving will decrease, bless. What, what leaves your hand does not leave your life, but goes into your future. So I decree supernatural increase is your portion. I call it in from the east. I call it in from the west. I call increase in from the north, from the south. So I decree that promotion is coming to you. As you step out to give in faith, I believe in the name of Jesus that the world of God concerning giving will make an expression in your life. So Lord, we thank you because it's already done in Jesus' name and everyone again says amen. amen. The ushers will come to where you are as the music begins to play. Just put your offering in the offering basket. We'll close shortly after that.
Amen. All right, we should stop now. We're going to continue. <laughs> Amen. All right. Now, remember October 6th, 7th, and 8th is the church anniversary. 6th, 7th, and 8th. And um, we have... Is it 6, 7, or 8? 6 is a fr Friday, 7 p.m. We have guest speakers coming in from Nigeria, Jerry, Bishop Jerry Bakara. He's going to be with us beginning from Friday all the way through Sunday. He's just coming for the weekend. Then we have uh, Bishop Tony Bahu. He's actually based in uh, Florida. He has a big ministry in Florida. But I believe originally is from the islands, Trinidad, Tobago, I believe. You have our own, uh, always with us, Apostle Hall Best from Westchester. Somebody say amen. amen. And I know there was something we said last year about the 10th anniversary um, that we're going to do. So I believe we're going to do it. So we have a land for STBC. Amen? Yeah, we have a land. So, so I just believe it is nice to do it. Amen? It's nice to just do it. So what I put is that I believe we're still on the works on the day. I believe on Saturday morning, weather permit, amen, we might do a groundbreaking. I think, uh, yes, we're going to, so... So we'll see how it goes. You know, we're gonna go through the place. We're going to do what some of you have to give me the idea. That was my first groundbreaking. I don't think I've done the groundbreaking before. So we're gonna just go and just I believe you you break how, how do you break the ground? Just break it? <laughs> With a shovel. All right. So you're gonna talk to you're gonna talk to Dr. Steve on that so he can help us with the coordination of the groundbreaking. Amen. <laughs> Construction worker. Yeah, okay. He's not here? Oh, he's a doctor. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. What I'm doing now is to make sure it doesn't work on that day. He has to call off. He's working too much. My goodness. Ten days stretch. You better not stretch it on the university weekend. <laughs> Amen. But it's exciting because I went to take a look at the land uh, this week. This is Wednesday. Maybe Sunday. Maybe it was Sunday after church. And I saw the piece of property that is a little bit above two acres. And, uh, and I just couldn't. I could believe because we said it before. This was going to happen by the time it's 10 years. And just to see it come to pass. With all the documentation will be handed over to me. Amen. Amen. It's really, yes, it, it is really, it is really interesting. And so, but how did you get it? We, we got it by faith, amen? <laughs> we didn't buy with money, faith. Everything you want in life is by faith. We spoke it, we believe it, we visualize it, and we see it. So all the things we are teaching, that is the way it works. It's the same process. You don't have to say, I got to get the money for it. Just keep speaking it. Keep talking it. And God would bring it to pass. So somebody amongst you, you know, decided to buy that piece of property for STBC. Yes. Yeah. So they bought it, a very nice property, and there are more. Somebody else also wants to imagine having three or four properties in one year. But we are going to break that one first. We can, you know, you, you know, you can break many grounds. So we are first ground breaking, twenty. 23. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's exciting to serve the Lord. Yes, all these things are always happening in a positive. All right, so we're going to close in prayer. Who wants to pray for us? Who likes to pray? Let me see. And everybody is, all right, you come, come then, come. Brother John, come up here and pray then. <laughs> Brother John is ready to pray with his hat. cowboy hat. No, no, no bird can make nest out of your head. <laughs> no, okay, I got it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get the microphone. Okay. You pray, closing prayer. All right, everybody, dear beloved. Oh no, that's wrong one. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful night. We uh, everybody around here, and I uh, hope everybody gets home safe and sound. And thank you, Lord, for uh, hearing our Reverend today, and uh, er we enjoyed everything that he said. And a uh, big prayer for him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. God bless you. We we'll see you on. We we'll see you on for Friday Power Encounter. But remember to be in church on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Show somebody some love in Jesus' name. Amen.